Okay, well, welcome everyone. I'm pleased to uh, welcome you to this parent and family and student forum as we begin and look forward to a new academic year. I'd like to begin by introducing myself. I'm Lisa Landerman. I'm the Vice President for Student Affairs and I use she, her, her pronouns. And I'd like to now take a moment to have the panel who's gonna speak with you today to introduce themselves. So I'll begin with Kate Copeland. Hi everyone, I'm Kate Copeland, the Interim Dean at PNCA. And uh, Dean Feingold. Hi, I'm Ruth Feingold. I am the Dean at the College of Arts and Sciences. Leslie. Hi everyone, my name is Leslie Shevlin. I use she, her pronouns and I'm the Associate Director of Athletics. Lisa Holliday. Hi everyone, I'm Lisa Holliday. I'm Associate Dean of Students and Director of Student Engagement and Leadership and I use she, her pronouns. Jackson. Hi everyone, I'm Jackson Seymour. I use he, him, his pronouns. I'm the Associate Director of Student Life at PNCA Willamette. Don Thompson. Hi, good evening, everyone. I'm Don Thompson. Uh, I use he, him pronouns. I'm the director of Bishop Wellness Center, which is uh, our student health and counseling center. Scott Etherton. Hello, my name is Scott Etherton, he, him pronouns, and I'm the director of residence life and housing. And Micah Cavallo. Hi, everyone. My name is Micah Cavallo, and I am the uh, director of dining services at Willamette University. We're the food people. <laughs> and Abbas. Hello everyone, my name is Abbas Hill and I use he, him, his pronouns and I'm the Dean of Students for Community Care and Inclusion. Mm -hmm. And last but not least, I'd like to welcome uh, President Steve Thorsett. Thanks, Lisa. I'm Steve Thorsett. I am just starting my 11th year as the president at, at Willamette University. And perhaps I'll, I'll seize the floor here and, and give just a few words of welcome. It's really a delight um, to have this opportunity to, um, to have parents and families and students um, all come together for discussion with this really talented staff um, panel that, that we put together for today. Um, this is in many ways, um, it feels like the opening of the new academic year to me. I spent the morning um, at the uh, Pacific Northwest College of Art campus in Portland uh, meeting with staff there and having lunch in the afternoon at a staff retreat um, here on the Salem campus. And then um, today, um, talking with all of you um, at the end of the day, and it really feels like we are um, off and running toward the, the start of programs um, here for the fall semester. This is an exciting year for us. Um, we have come out of a, a very challenging year, obviously. Um, some of you are returning students. You know that, um, that we found ways to, to um, fulfill our mission last year with um, primarily in-person classes. Um, and to, to um, really accomplish some very difficult things in a very difficult situation in a safe way. Um, I was really proud at Willamette last year that um, with the care that we took in preparing um, for operating in a COVID environment and then the operational procedures that we used on campus meant that we had no um, known cases of, of transmission of COVID on our campus last year. And, and we were very proud of that. Um, and we certainly um, hope to extend that um, going forward into the next year, but it meant that, that it was a, a challenging year for everybody involved. This year, um, we are starting as a fully vaccinated campus. Both the, the Portland campus and the Salem campus meet the CDC um, full vaccination um, definitions. Um, obviously, that we are still in a dynamic environment, and you're going to hear a little bit more in a couple of minutes about what that means in terms of, of uh, procedures on campus, but we think that we're going to be able to operate in, in a mode that looks um, very much like um, normal operations here at Willamette next year. And, and I, I, for one, am very excited about what that means for our students um, as we come back into this vibrant um, set of, of university campuses um, here in Oregon. So we're very much looking forward um, to having you back for the returning students and to welcome you, you to Willamette for everybody else. And I'm going to pass it on to, to people who have more information to share. Thanks. Thank you, President Thorsett. And so as, as President Thorsett alluded to, uh, we do have COVID-19 policy updates. Uh, by now, all students today should have received an email that outlines these with a link to our website. But just to, by way of summary, 
Um, as was mentioned, we are a fully vaccinated campus as defined by the CDC. We have very few exceptions for medical or religious reasons on campus. And that affords us the opportunity to operate in a really vibrant way. So outside, there are masks not required on campus currently. And uh, we're, we're pretty excited about that. That would be for, um, for anyone. Vaccinated members of our community are strongly encouraged to wear masks indoors when they are in, particularly in kind of community spaces. But unvaccinated members of our community are required to wear masks indoors. And so we wanna make sure for their safety that masks are required for folks who um, have received an approved exemption. Uh, Willamette students, for those of you who lived in the residence halls last year, was a difficult time where students couldn't visit students in other residence halls. Willamette students couldn't visit other Willamette students uh, in, in the residence halls. And we will allow for that both uh, in our house uh, as well as um, in uh, the residence halls on the Salem campus. So we're very excited about uh, being able to welcome guests again. Um, all outside visitors, and so that means parent, family members, or friends who might be visiting students on either campus are required to wear a mask while on campus, regardless of vaccination status. And for the main reason of that is we feel really strongly that unvaccinated folks need to be masked. And we just don't have mechanisms to be able to verify the times that we could have people at all times of day. And, um, and so we're just asking for a special precaution um, that people who are visiting campus are wearing masks. Those are just some of the high level highlights. Um, we, we don't expect that we will be distanced. Classes, as you will hear from our deans, are in, in person. Um, but for full information about the COVID policy updates, you can uh, take a look at our uh, our website. So those are the uh, those are the big highlights. And so I think that we can, again, answer, you can also, we'll have an opportunity for you can uh, raise questions, more questions about that at the end, but we'll move on to our, to our next speaker. And so with that, I believe that I am inviting Abbas Hill to introduce himself as our new Dean of Students for Community Care and Inclusion. Yes, thank you, Lisa. Hello again, everyone. My name again is Abbas Hill. And again, I use um, he, him, his pronouns. As Lisa stated, I serve as Dean of Students for Community Care and Inclusion, and I just I just started in this role, uh, you know, July. So I'm um, a, a few days past my one month anniversary, and it's so nice that you all can come to my celebration here. Um, in this role, I oversee a portfolio of student affairs departments and initiatives related to developing an inclusive and caring, I'm an engaged campus community, which includes um, the offices of a religious and spiritual life, which um, the university chaplain over, uh, uh, directly oversees, um, the Office of Multicultural Affairs, the Gender Resource and Advocacy Center, um, resources for DACA and undocumented students, and the Office of Residence Life and Housing. Um, in addition to my supervision of these uh, student affairs departments, um, my primary, area, primary areas of responsibility are um, the direct oversight of the student conduct um, and conflict resolution strategies. Um, I serve also as a deputy Title IX coordinator. Um, and um, I also am responsible for the emergency on-call protocols, as well as um, the oversight of the student care team. Um, so those are some of my responsibilities. I'm so very excited to be here at Willamette. Um, and I look forward to a year ahead with all of our students and can't wait to welcome our new students here and welcome our returning students back. Thanks, Abbas. I, I also want to let folks know that um, we did receive many questions in advance, and our panelists will try their best to answer some of those within their remarks. Uh, and we will also try to get your answers to questions in the Q&A. And if not, we will follow up the best we can with, with answers to those questions. So with that, I'd like to invite uh, Dean Ruth Feingold. Hey, everyone. Um, so I'm not going to uh, go to take any kind of lengthy introduction of myself. Uh, those of you who are returning know me. Um, those of you who are not, I hope will soon get to know me. I am really delighted to uh, welcome students back to campus for fall of 2021. Residential in-person education is really the heart of what we do in the College of Arts and Sciences. There are many ways of gaining an education. 
but we really firmly believe that being together in community, being able to exchange ideas, not only in the classroom, but outside of the classroom, in residence halls, over lunch tables, walking along the pathways, this is the heart and soul of the kind of educational experience that students can get. And being able to fully bridge their academic experience with their co-curricular experience, their extracurricular work, is the best way of getting the kind of holistic education we try to provide here at Willamette. So we are really thrilled that having a fully vaccinated campus means that we are going to be able to return to fully in-person classrooms this fall. We are not doing hyperflex classes with some students present and some students zooming in from afar. Uh, there remains the ability to go to fully Zoom classes should we need to for any reasons having to do with wildfire smoke as we had last year, or if there were a huge upsurge in uh, COVID or any other issues. We do not anticipate at this time that happening, um, but we are planning for students to be here and faculty to be here and for us to be in a learning community together. At the same time, we have learned some things from our COVID year. In part, faculty have learned how there can be some pedagogical advantages from doing some things online, having flipped classrooms with material presented ahead of time for students to ponder on their own and then coming together in person to discuss it. So some faculty will probably be incorporating a few more digital assignments than they have in the past. We also now have the ability, both through experience and through technology, to be able to better meet students where they are in terms of disability accommodations, which might, in certain circumstances, allow for some remote attendance at classes. We are also looking at ways that we can develop high impact and pedagogically meaningful ways of utilizing digital work and interaction potentially across different campuses. So for example, finding ways of bringing in students at our PNCA campus in Portland and students at our Salem campus here, the College of Arts and Sciences, into one classroom community. And we look forward to possibilities of being able to do that. For those of you who are incoming first year students or parents of incoming first year students, I wanted to share with you some of the ways that we have of supporting you as you arrive on our campus. Everyone at this point should have been in touch with your college colloquium professor who is also your first year advisor and will in fact remain your advisor until you declare a major. And if you declare a major in the discipline that your advisor is in, that person can continue to be your advisor. Otherwise you will get an advisor in your new discipline. Um, you not only will have that professor whom you'll be meeting with regularly two or three times a week in class, you'll also have a colloquium associate whom again, you should have been in touch with. This is an upper class student, we sometimes call them academic RAs, who can help you adjust to the academic expectations of life here at Willamette. Every college colloquium also has a community partner who's a staff member from somewhere across the university who's particularly interested in getting to know students and helping them acclimate to the community. And of course, for students who are resident on campus, which is most of our first year students, you will have your RAs as well as all of the student affairs staff who can help you acclimate in various ways. We have a large number of different kinds of support centers on campus. There's the learning center, which can help you with tutoring for particular classes if you're having difficulty. The writing center, which is a fabulous resource for anybody at any level in college for working on improving their writing. The quad center, which helps students with quantitative work, statistics in particular and the Digital Learning and World Language Studio, which is where our language tutoring services are organized. I also would like to highlight the work of our Career Development Center, which has welcomed several new counselors over the summer and has a really robust set of activities and programming and counseling services available for students at all areas of uh, career exploration, whether it's going through your first year of college and thinking about, oh dear, what am I going to do this summer after college? Do I wanna do something other than the same kind of summer job that I had when I was in high school, all the way through new graduates looking for meaningful professional work. And our counselors there work in concert with faculty and with academic advisors to make sure that students really develop um, a coherent path through college that will help them bind together their academics, their co-curricular work, their extracurricular work, and their employment in order to pursue meaningful connections after college as well. 
And finally, I do just want to highlight a little bit about the new opportunities for cross university collaboration that will be open to all undergraduate students. Uh, we do have a new fourth college as part of Willamette, which is the Pacific Northwest College of the Arts. And all Willamette students are free to take classes there. We still have to work out what some of the arrangements might be for uh, merging class schedules to make this easier and for providing uh, time for students to be able to get back and forth between Portland and Salem. So those are challenges that we still need to work on. But at the moment, there is a wealth of new opportunities at both the undergraduate and the graduate level for College of Arts and Sciences students to benefit from both their peers and their professors and also the really astonishing facilities at this absolutely premier arts institution that we're delighted to have as a partner. We are also launching this fall for the first time an undergraduate business major in partnership with our graduate faculty at the Atkinson School of Management. Uh, that is something that is again open to all College of Arts and Sciences students should they decide to declare a business major. They will be having coursework and counseling and advising through our Atkinson faculty and will be graduating with a Bachelor of Science in Business Management. So um, those are just some of the things that you can look forward to this fall. I am happy to answer any further questions as we get farther along in the webinar. And meanwhile, just welcome back. I really, really look forward to seeing you later this month. Thank you very much, Ruth. And now I'd like to welcome Dean Kate Copeland, who will speak from uh, experience at PNCA. Hi, everyone. It is so good to be here with you today, and I cannot wait to meet all of you in person. Uh, as you've heard, we are launching into fall semester at PNCA at Willamette with a really vibrant on-campus experience. And as Ruth said, it also draws on all of the innovations and the lessons that we've learned about pedagogy during the pandemic. So in short, you are in for a big treat. It's going to be amazing, and I cannot wait to see you in person this fall. So. As you've heard from many people on the call so far, all of us will be fully engaged in the classrooms, in the studios, in the workshops. You're going to hear music floating through the atrium in our primary building. You'll see amazing exhibitions of work by students and visiting artists. You'll get to do projection mapping and virtual reality work and make think code. You'll see pop-up shows in all the nooks and crannies of our buildings and so much more. So essentially, we're gonna be working together dynamically, supporting all of the eccentricities of the creative process and all the academic rigors that are necessary for a full uh, preparation into life in art and design. At PNCA, we support students who are prepared for lives of the creative practice, and it's gonna be a great year to do that within. So I realize that some of you on this call may not have been to the PNCA Portland-based campus before. And so I wanted to make sure that all of you know this is your school. This is, you know, regardless of which school uh, you are currently enrolled within, um, I wanna make sure that all of the College of Arts and Sciences students and anyone else on this call feels really welcome uh, and just empowered to come into our buildings and see all of the work that's within there. Uh, PNCA is the oldest and best art and design school in the Pacific Northwest. And now, of course, we are one of the colleges of Willamette University. We have 11 different undergraduate majors and a variety of minors. We also have eight graduate programs. Um, so there's some really interesting and dynamic interplay between the undergraduate and the graduate population with graduate students uh, supporting the undergraduates and vice versa every step of the way. And as you've heard from people on this call, the Portland campus is so beautiful. I, you know, it's, it's something to experience, but let me just say that it's gorgeous. It's for all of you. Um, and the main building is located right in the heart of the Pearl District. So uh, it is in close proximity to everything that Portland has to offer. And the glass building, which houses some additional studios and workshops is just across the river with the gorgeous residence hall art house uh, for foundation students just a couple of blocks away. So this fall, PNCA is going to continue offering the exact same programming that we've always had, the same majors, the same minors, the same graduate programs, and in the same place in Portland, Oregon. So we have all the stuff we used to have, and we have so much more because we're the fourth college as part of Willamette University. Uh, one example of that, a thing to get really excited about, I think, is that there are a number of faculty from the College of Arts and Sciences who will be teaching PNCA-based classes, which brings the expertise of the College of Arts and Sciences right to the doorstep of students enrolled in degree programs at PNCA. 
Uh, and then PMCA students, I want to make sure you know that you too have a chance to enroll directly in classes on the Salem campus. And if anybody needs advice about that, contact me offline and I'll make sure that you understand the mechanisms to make that happen. Uh, so I really hope to see a lot of interaction between students who are home based in Portland at PNCA and those who are attending classes primarily in Salem. So as I always say, creativity is more important than ever in this day and age. And Art and Design School is really about making work that's new, authentic, and original. Art and Design School is about changing the world. Art and Design School is about solving problems through the power of visual and critical thinking. And this year, Art and Design School has even more to offer because our Art and Design School, Pacific Northwest College of Art, is one of the colleges within Willamette University. It will be an amazing partnership and I cannot wait to interact with all of you in Portland and in Salem. Thank you. Thanks so much, Kate. Um, I also wanted to mention that we are in the process of hiring some new staff at PNCA that uh, are both in student life and in and supporting students around accessibility. And so we will have a new area coordinator at PNCA. We have a new associate dean of students at PNCA. And next, I'd like to invite Jackson Seamayer, who is the associate director of student life, to say a few words that he might want of welcome about life at PNCA. Thank you, Lisa. Uh, like Lisa said, I'm Jackson Seamayer, the associate director of student life at PNCA Willamette. Um, some of the things that uh, you your students might come to student life for. Um, I like to think of us as a general kind of student support center, um, maybe different than like an academic support center, but support in a lot of other different ways in that we might be able to help direct a student to the proper department on campus um, or maybe help them answer some commonly asked questions they might have if they're either new to our institution or maybe if they're returning and after such a wild year last year, you know, less time on campus might need a little help reorienting themselves. Um, we also oversee a lot of our student events and activities on campus. Some of the more social things like our welcome back barbecue and Halloween party every year. Um, also some wellness related things like free yoga for our students on our campus. Um, we also uh, coordinate new student orientation. So if we have any new students here, um, you should have heard from us by now, um, and we'll be continuing our communication with you about what you can expect for new student orientation coming up starting on August 23rd. Um, let's see, what else can I think of? Um, extending to our students who may be down on the Salem campus, we would love to have you at any of our events that are happening at the PNCA campus. Um, if you find yourself in Portland, or if you want to come specifically to something that we might be having up here, um, you are always welcome since we are all one institution. Um, you know, our campus is your campus. And so we welcome any, and that goes for our new students who are going to be in the Salem campus as well. We welcome any and all of you up to anything that we might be having going on in the PNCA campus. Um, we also oversee our student organizations, um, and those run a wide variety of uh, interests from students' personal hobbies to things that might be more related to their areas of study. Um, and it's very easy for students at the PNC campus to begin their own club. So if there's something that doesn't really tickle your fancy, we can help you get set up by starting a new club as well. Um, and I am uh, hoping to be able to answer lots of questions today. So feel free to please put them in the chat and be more than happy uh, to try to get them answered for you. And just a, a friendly amendment, if you could put them in the Q&A, we, we would appreciate that. Thank, yeah, yeah, thank you, Lisa, no, sorry, no, my no. apologies. I no, meant the Q&A, yeah. No worries, no worries. So next I'd like to invite Lisa Holiday, our Associate Dean of Students and Director of our Office of Student Engagement and Leadership. Hi everyone, welcome. Uh, one of the things that we all love about Willamette on our Salem campus, and I think Jackson would say the same about our Portland campus, is we have a very vibrant campus life. And a, a big part of our campus life at Willamette is the many student organizations and clubs that we have available to students. And so we're really looking forward to having that type of campus life emerge again very soon um, when students return. And I have just a couple of things to share that hopefully you all find exciting is we will bring back an in-person activities expo coming up in mid-September on the 13th. And we're gonna have all of our clubs and organizations outside by the mill stream with information about how you can join those organizations, 
as well as other on-campus activities and departments, as well as off-campus opportunities. And we're planning on having all of those clubs and organizations and events being in person. Uh, so we're looking forward to seeing some of the traditional events um, from the past come back again and a great way to engage. And then we're also planning to have Sparks Fitness Center open the first week of classes. And uh, we know that many of you all uh, missed the opportunity to, to work out there and um, you know, deal with fitness and exercise and um, classes and things like that. So we're looking forward to that as well. Um, one of the ways that when you return to campus um, in Salem is to stay informed is through checking today at Willamette, which is our email newsletter. Uh, there will always be a section that has upcoming events and activities as well as announcements. We also have a bathroom stall newsletter called the toilet paper, and that is in every bathroom stall on campus. And that's a great way to stay uh, aware of what's happening. And then finally, there are never a shortage of posters and other information posted around campus and in the residence halls so that you can stay informed. Uh, one of the things that we're looking forward to in this new um, partnership with PNCA is we're excited about the opportunities for collaboration. And so for those of you who are first year students or new students um, coming to the Salem campus or PNCA in Portland, we will be collaborating during new student orientation. And so there will be opportunities for students in Portland to come to Salem and participate in uh, some of our traditions during orientation. And there will also be an opportunity for students on the Salem campus to go to Portland and participate in a making activity with PNCA. So that's just one of the opportunities for collaboration that we're excited about and we look forward to many more in the future. So we'll see you soon. Thank you, Lisa. And now Don Thompson, our director of Bishop Wellness Center. Hello again, everybody. Uh, so excited to, uh, to, to have this time with everyone. I, I just want to take a moment and just acknowledge that whether whether you are a returning student or a new to Willamette or PNCA student, uh, it's been it's been a it's been a difficult year. Um, you know, our, our students here uh, last year, you know, we we were experiencing uh, wildfires and smoke. We had an ice storm, um, and certainly COVID uh, it impacted everything for all of us. Um, and I think it's just important to acknowledge that it's going to take some time for us to reacclimate uh, to being in person. And so I think it's important to note we are committed to maintaining a trauma-informed lens as we return as a, as a community, right? Our, our interpersonal skills, of course, have atrophied because we've been out of practice. Um, so again, we really are going to take a trauma-informed lens. What that means is we are going to lead with care and compassion uh, in all that we do. Um, and we're going to commit to being as clear uh, and transparent in our communications to be able to share as much as we know when we know it. Um, to, to really help uh, invite a, a, a stabilization of our community. Just really excited to have folks back uh, join us on campus. As a reminder, uh, both health and counseling services are available uh, for uh, Willamette students, for PNCA students. Uh, we are going to have both in-person and telehealth available. Um, importantly, for the, for the returning students at uh, PNCA, there's a new counseling model that we're going to be able to offer. We just hired a new uh, dedicated counselor for PNCA students that will be on site. Um, the new model means that it is free, it is confidential, there, is, there are no session limits. Uh, we're not billing insurance. I know a lot of students are often uh, on their parents' or family's insurance, uh, which means sometimes their confidentiality can be compromised a little bit if you bill insurance, so we don't do that. Um, so really excited to be able to offer that, that new resource. Um, we will continue to offer COVID testing in Bishop Wellness Center. Certainly anybody who is symptomatic, uh, vaccinated or not, um, will be able to have access to a test and anybody who is a known uh, close contact uh, of anybody uh, who tested positive for COVID will of course test them as well. Um, and please know uh, there are a number of us that are actively and continuously uh, in touch with all of the local public health officials and the Oregon Health Authority, uh, constantly monitoring the changing guidance. We will adapt as we learn things. Um, I know there's a few questions about booster shots. If booster shots become uh, required or recommended, absolutely we will move in that direction and we'll, we'll work to get a vaccine clinic 
uh, for students on campus. Um, but again, I, I just want to reassure you uh, that there are a team of really great people um, on top of this uh, and ready to respond uh, quickly. Um, and lastly, though it's a bit of a pivot, uh, it's an important enough thing uh, to mention here. Um, all students uh, are automatically enrolled for both, both PNCA students and Willamette students are automatically enrolled in our student insurance plan. You don't have to keep it, but if you don't want it, you have to waive out of it. If you don't waive out of it, you will be automatically enrolled and charged for that. So please, please, please have your students, or if you are a student, please read the many emails you have received um, from us asking you uh, to, uh, to, to waive the health insurance if you so choose. I just, I, I want you to uh, make an informed decision for yourself um, and uh, waive out of that if you don't need it. So I will stop there um, and uh, turn it over to the next person. And, and Don, before we leave the sure. student insurance, I just want clarification that there is not flexibility with that deadline. Isn't that correct? So if they miss Thank the you. deadline, they're paying for the insurance. Is that we drop correct? our final? That is exactly right. We drop our final file uh, in September. And so if you are not waived out, I can't reverse charges once enrolled. So that's a really, really important thing. Um, those deadlines are hard and immovable. So please, please, please read the emails. Uh, submit your waiver if you do not want to keep the student insurance. Thank you. Uh, next, we have Scott Etherton, Director of Residence Life and Housing. Hello again, and I uh, um, just echo what everybody else has said about being so excited for fall and having people uh, back to campuses. Um, just a few highlights. Um, again, we're going to have free laundry for those in Salem. Uh, juniors and seniors may know that that is a, a change from uh, what we've done before and, and we're offering that again of course in uh, the art house it, it remains um, individual units have those um, while we are sort of in a, in a mode of people are vaccinated um, need not have uh, masks um, face coverings in in the halls uh, do bring some because again we never know how things go there's also shopping and, and going to other places that may require those and so have some, some of those with you when you arrive to campus. Um, because of the smoke, which people have mentioned um, earlier, I encourage you to have a parkulate um, uh, respirator uh, type, like an N95 or something with a stronger um, a mask that will pull out some of that smoke in the event that we have these in the Valley again, like we did last year. Um, and of course, bring a fan. That's just always a good thing to have. Uh, we don't have air conditioning in most of the buildings. And so um, a fan is, is a good thing to have with you. Um, and then some things that you just need if you haven't been thinking of, um, the flashlights and the first aid kit and those sort of things. So make sure you're um, bringing things in the event that we were to have um, um, like a stoppage of power or that sort of thing. You're sort of ready to go, able to take your own temperature, those, those sort of uh, adulting things. Um, regarding internet, um, same thing uh, as years before in Salem. Uh, the Wi-Fi, they boosted some of that, so that's been good. In Portland, um, there's the fiber optic Ethernet. I know some of you say Ethernet, but we can just agree to disagree on that. Uh, those connections, uh, dedicated routers there. Please no private routers on either campus. Um, socializing in the hall, we're very excited to bring back sort of that sort of piece of, of normalcy and what people have enjoyed of, of being able to um, visit each other, um, even in different halls. Um, do be aware of the, the mask requirement for some. Roommates should be having these conversations with each other. And I know for some, this brings up a, um, it's a challenging conversation to have, um, but I do encourage people to talk about what those expectations are gonna be in the hall, in the room. Um, if people have been vaccinated or not, they have those conversations ahead of time. Um, and, um, and we are looking forward to those programs and um, those activities, whether it's hall staff or the residence hall association or residents themselves putting together events and, and having people back in community. Um, the pizza parties can happen again and we're very excited about that. Um, if you have any question, um, about assignments or or those sort of things, please email us at housing uh, at willamette.edu. And thank you. Thanks, Scott. Uh, now, Micah, Director of Dining Services. Oops. 
Micah, are you with us? I'm not sure if we, Paul, can you, uh, can you tell if Micah's with us? I think we just lost him. Okay, so perhaps we'll get Micah back. How about we move on to Leslie and, and perhaps Micah will rejoin us. Yeah, thanks, Lisa. Um, hi, everyone, thanks for having me. Um, just a couple of things quickly from athletics. Uh, for our approximately 350 student athletes that we have on the Willamette, the Salem campus, um, as, Ruth, as Dean Feingold mentioned, uh, participating in athletics is a part of that co-curricular bridge that, that those student athletes participate in, um, coming to Willamette, you know, first and foremost for their academics. Uh, another thing that I want to point out, though, is uh, last year we were able to compete in the spring. It was not the same without having our student fans in the stands. So whether you're a first year or whether you're returning, uh, just some notes about what's going on the first week uh, of school with our home athletic events. Uh, as we allow spectators back into the stands, um, we would love to have you there and, and take a study break and, and come cheer on your fellow students as they take the field, the pool, the court, uh, and et cetera. Uh, we're really looking forward to the inaugural season for Women's Triathlon, one of the few programs uh, here on the West Coast and the only program in the Pacific Northwest. So we're excited to have them uh, and just really hoping to connect, um, especially our first year and transfer students. You'll see many of our fall sports helping you move in um, on August 24th. And if you do have any questions about athletics, uh, we are here to answer them, but just for all of our students, would love to have you out supporting um, and would love to, to see you again, just as much as we're looking forward to welcoming all of our student athletes back. So thanks, Lisa. Thanks so much, Leslie. And, and again, we're excited to be welcoming fans back to athletics. Um, one, one important reminder is that everyone, visitors and students who are attending will need to be wearing masks in the stands. That is one precaution that we are taking. Um, for welcoming folks back. So I think Micah is back with us. So if we can go now to Micah, our Director of Dining Services. Sorry about that, I had technical problems. <laughs> I would just echo uh, every, all the sentiments that everybody said uh, you know, before me. We are so excited to have you all back. And uh, for us in Dining Services, uh, we really look forward to having the energy in the cafe and having you guys be able to come through and, and see all the wonderful things that we've created for you and, and have that real personal experience that I know we probably didn't have as much of uh, last semester. And for you new, new new students, it'll be a whole new whole new uh, adventure for you guys. And we're super excited to take that journey with you. Uh, some of our highlights and dining services, we are doing a remodel over the summer of our main cafe in Gowdy Common. So we're Really excited to be able to unveil that, and uh, but that we have some new programming that we'll we'll be doing as well. So for uh, existing students, be on the lookout for some new culinary creations and new service styles, and we're excited to bring that to you. Uh, venue for uh, just to review our venues um, for new students that are not aware, and maybe just a review for the ones that are coming back. Uh, Gowdy Commons is is our main dining hall. And it is an all you care to eat facility exclusively now. So there's no retail here. Basically, once you come in and you swipe in, you can uh, have all you care to eat as long as you're here. And, uh, and we're pretty excited about that. It was well received uh, last semester when we rolled it out. Rick's Cafe is uh, across the way in the law school and is a retail espresso. And you can use um, regular uh, credit card, cash. You can use some of your flex points if you want to do that. To, to get retail items. And then Blitz Market is in the UC Center and it's kind of like our convenience, uh, convenience store where you can buy snacks and you know, bulk beverages and things of that nature. It's kind of a cool little, little, little uh, perk to have. Um, let's see, as far as our meal plans go, the biggest change there for people who were last year, you are aware of the all you care to eat, but that is a big change um, in the past. Uh, it was uh, not all you care to eat all the time, and now it is all you care to eat all the time um, if you're on the meal plan. So there's several options to choose from, and they come with a sliding scale of what we call flex points, 
which are kind of like uh, denomination uh, additions to your flex plan that allow you to buy retail items. Uh, there's also a commuter plan. If you happen to not be, um, you know, on campus, you can for for um, upperclassmen, you can definitely buy in a, a commuter plan. It gives you 40 meals, and that's again, that's all you care to eat. It comes with a really substantial amount of flex, or you can get a 25, and uh, it comes with a, a substantial amount of flex as well. Then that's great if you're coming on campus just a couple of times. It's really easy to swipe in and, and get a real good meal. A topic that comes up a lot for us is uh, dietary and allergen concerns. So it's a big focus for us. Uh, we're kind of well, we're, we're definitely well positioned to address those things uh, just by nature of who we are as a company. Bon Appetit um, run, uh, is founded on cooking from scratch and using local wholesome ingredients. So we're able to change up um, uh, recipes and, and production uh, to address any concern that comes up uh, from basically any any student. But last year, we had several students that uh, their allergens were so specific that we would just basically make them a one-off meal every time they came in. And as long as you're communicating with us, uh, we are happy to do whatever we can to make your experience safe and make your experience a, a, a real pleasurable one. So, I mean, like, like I said in the intro, we are the food people and, uh, you know, we want to bring you a great food experience. So, so I, Micah, people are asking about Kaneko, and I, I, I believe that Kaneko will not, unfortunately, be open this academic year. Our, our TIUA uh, friends will not be joining us this year, which is making that uh, difficult to open. Am I correct about that? I think you, you are correct. I think it's uh, fall 2022, mm -hmm. is what, as I remember the uh, decision. Yeah. Right. But, but we do do some Kaneko style food here. It's not exactly the same thing, but we do, uh, we'll do like a pop-up sushi, you know, we'll do some of like the ramen bowls. So they're, they're, you, you can still get some of that fare. And, and if, you're, if that's what you're looking for, just always feel free to come into the cafe. Chef's always here, I'm here, you can email us. Um, we're happy to take all suggestions and then make those things reality, so. Right. And for our, our uh, Folks who are at the Portland campus of PNCA uh, know that there is a food service. Uh, Ramona is returning. Uh, I believe it's the New Moon Cafe. Jackson, am I correct with that? Uh, and I have Moonflower. talked to the Moonflower Cafe. Thank you. Um, and mostly because our, our the art house, our apartment style living, and so students uh, are making their own food there. But there is opportunity for some grab and go food. Uh, in, in the 511 building. I think we are now at our question, our Q&A period, so perhaps we can go back to gallery view. Uh, and I know one question that keeps coming up, uh, Ruth, is around study abroad and understanding what's happening with study abroad this semester and how will folks be able to hear updates about that? So study abroad is something that is obviously fairly complicated. Uh, it involves not only our campus, but our partner institutions and of course, uh, governments abroad. So we were forced to cancel our fall semester program for students in at Tokyo International University simply because students are unable to get visas um, from the Japanese government. So we are monitoring the situation. Um, we recommend that all students register for a full slate of classes on campus uh, here in Oregon, um, even if they are planning to study abroad so that they have their classes in place as a fallback. And we try to call for a uh, drop dead deadline about a month before the beginning of the term um, to give students full information about what they're doing. Any student who decides that they need to make a decision before that and might say, okay, I don't wanna deal with the uncertainty. I'm going to pull out of my program. I'm trying to do this again next year. Uh, that's totally fine. We are, as I said, really very much at the mercy of, um, of international travel restrictions when it comes to study abroad, but we're working very hard to get as many students as possible abroad safely because it is such an important part of college education. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Don, there's some, uh, a little bit of confusion about if folks waive the insurance at, at Bishop, uh, what access do they have to Bishop, if you could clarify that. Yes, thank you. Uh, so the, the insurance, uh, waiving or keeping the insurance is completely independent of being able to access services at Bishop. Uh, we see people regardless of insurance, 
Um, we don't bill the student, uh, we don't bill insurances other than the student insurance, but we will, we see students uh, on Kaiser, on Providence, on HMOs, things like that. So um, we're a really good first stop for a lot of the things that are really, you know, common to the college health populations, the coughs, the colds, the injuries, the stomach upset, the skin problems, things like that. So we're a good first stop. Um, and if we do need to refer out, we're, we're uh, quite proximate, literally across the street from one of the uh, best and, and biggest uh, hospitals in, in the Valley. Um, and we have a lot of uh, partners in our local community, um, both in Salem and in, part, in Portland, uh, to which we can refer students. But uh, you do not have to use, you do not have to keep the student insurance to, to use Bishop Wellness Center. Thank you for that opportunity to clarify that. Scott and Lisa, could you clarify move-in dates for um, various groups of students? Uh, I'd be happy to, and then Lisa, correct me if I'm missing something. Um, so for first year students at the Portland at Art House, uh, move-in is August 23. And then August 24 is move-in for first year students in Salem. And then for those returning, and this is not athletes or uh, group leaders that are, are, are coming early, um, you have a coach or a, a directive somewhere else to uh, let you know those dates. And then for those returning, um, Coming back to to um, uh, Salem, it's August twenty eighth is the uh, the move in date um, for you all. The earliest, the 29th will also be available to help um, students move in there. Lisa, do you want to speak about the sophomore reorientation? Yeah, so uh, for those of you um, on the Salem campus who are entering your sophomore year. Uh, you received some communication from the housing office about uh, an opportunity to let us know how we might uh, craft a kind of a reorientation program for you since you had um, a very different first year at Willamette. So we hope that you have seen that email and have given us your input on what kind of things you are interested in learning about, um, if you have any concerns about returning to campus, and then um, not only in your residence halls, but also uh, the first week of classes, we're gonna be offering some unique programming just for sophomore students um, that we hope you're, you'll be excited about that are in direct response to the responses that we've received in the assessment. Right. Ruth, there are questions about uh, music ensemble and wondering if that will be able to take place in person this year. We are currently planning for music ensembles to be rehearsing in person. Our singers will be wearing singing masks as they did last year. There's been a huge amount of research that has been done on ways of safely dealing with wind instruments and singing. And we do believe that it is advisable to use some extra precautions even on our fully vaccinated campus simply because of the projection that singers have um, and the number of aerosol particles that they, they uh, put out and how far those go. But we're really looking forward to a series of uh, both rehearsals and also uh, live performances with limited numbers of external guests coming masked to hear our students. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Micah, uh, what do students do if uh, they have classes that go straight through lunch? What might be some options for them? Let's see if they go, well, they could buy, uh, there's grab and go that's available at Rick's and Blitz, uh, and those are available all through the day. Um, there's also, you could, you could pick a snack up at Rick's. We will probably be deploying the Get app again. So maybe you could have ordered your meal early and picked it up, or you could order it uh, at the tail end of one, our service window, and then you could probably come in and uh, swipe in and pick it up through the, the little cubbies that we have in the, in the cafe. So that's probably, the, the Get app has been a little rough for us, but uh, hopefully we work it all out and it'll be a successful launch this year, but uh, definitely a grab and go would be a way to um, get yourself something uh, that will sustain you until the next meal, for sure. And then, and we've, and we've had instances where people are close to getting in there before we close, and I, obviously we're not gonna turn anybody away, so. Um, you know, the hours are the hours, but if you're there like five minutes, 10 minutes before we shut down, we're, we're going to let you come in. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Micah. Uh, mm -hmm. Lisa, I'm wondering, um, people are asking about family weekend and activities that they might expect for that and when, when family weekend is happening. 
Yeah, so Family Weekend is happening this year, October 15th through the 17th on the Salem campus. And we will be launching an online registration process um, the week of August 23rd. So the week of, of opening days, for those of you who are new students, um, that's also the week we're launching the, the registration process. We're gonna have a wide variety of activities. Uh, we are planning on having um, hikes to Silver Falls State Park. We are planning on having an acapella concert, a Willamette Dance Company, which is a student organization. Um, they will be doing a performance. Uh, we're gonna have some athletic events. Uh, we have Bon Appetit's Gourmet Brunch. Uh, we also will have the ever popular faculty lectures, which we call mini university. So a wide variety of opportunities. Um, we just throw them out there on the schedule and then you as a family can select which, which activities um, you'd like to sign up for. And uh, we're looking forward to bringing it back this year after not having it in 2020. Mm -hmm. I guess, Lisa, this would be for you as well. People want to know, do PNCA students have access to Sparks Fitness Center and, and what opportunities around fitness might be available to them? Uh, so at this point, we haven't worked out a process for PNCA students to act, access Sparks Fitness Center, um, but that's something that we can work on. Um, so I guess what I would um, ask for students who are interested um, to connect with Jackson C. Mayor um, on the PNCA campus, and then we can work together to figure out how, how to make that happen. Mm -hmm. that's, yeah, I know that's not a specific answer, but uh, I, I know that we can work together to figure something out. Yeah, the, the distance is the challenge, having access isn't, right? Mm -hmm. So certainly um, you're, you'll be, have, be available to participate. We certainly know transportation is the challenge, although we have had a number of folks take the train and have found it quite enjoyable. Uh, but I also know that in talking with our director of recreation, uh, he's excited to be able to extend many of the outdoor recreation activities that we have traditionally provided for students in Salem, that there's no reason why we won't extend those uh, to students in Portland, just pick them up on the bus on the way to one of the lovely, beautiful outdoor sites. So stay tuned for those kinds of recreation opportunities. So I, I know that we are winding down. Um, we said that we would end at 6.30. Uh, please know that uh, we will continue to be communicating uh, with you about any updates we are, particularly as, as, as COVID conditions evolve. We have a team who is constantly uh, reviewing that with safety being our number one priority. But we feel very confident that because we have such uh, wonderful cooperation and commitment to uh, public health on our campus, what we have uh, learned from last year is that, uh, that our community really rallies around the commitments and care around um, public health that we feel confident that we'll be able to really offer a much more vibrant campus experience uh, and, and feel comfortable saying we are we are close to back to normal whatever normal might mean uh with an eye towards continuing to watch watch for safety uh, it, i didn't know if there were any other closing remarks from any of of the panelists well thank you everyone for tuning in and again we will um keep your questions and and uh find ways to respond uh, to those that we weren't able to answer uh, more specifically. So thanks everyone.